welcome back. It's the Burning Numbers podcast with Numea Malik and myself, Josh, here. Um, so I read an article recently about uh, this thing called a gaming disorder. Um, you might be interested. So I'm just going to read like, the definition from Google straight away. So gaming disorder is defined in the 11th revision of the International Classification of Diseases uh, as a pattern of behavior characterized by impaired control over gaming, increasing priority give uh given to gaming over other activities to the extent uh the gaming takes uh precedence over other interests and daily activities and continues to or escalates or escalation of gaming despite the occurrence of negative consequences so like this idea that i don't know their, their social behavior decreases their, their schoolwork if they're a school you know um, these sort of things. What do you think? Uh, I think yes, yeah, definitely that can happen, right? Because like, like but to be fair, with anything in life, I think it has to do with moderation. Yeah. So like people like this gaming disorder comes from people that are playing like like twenty, thirty hours a week of games or more. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or more. Like that. That that's I'm lowballing it there. Like twenty, yeah. thirty hours is a lowball. Yeah. But then. So like it's like with anything in life where if you if I played football for too long every every week, I would I get a football disorder because I'm taking my time away from like again like schoolwork and things like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Per, um, I I guess I guess so. Yeah. So I'm going with this going the idea that it's just like we're just you're using one thing, and you're saying it's basically just addiction. You're just saying addiction is bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One yeah. type of addiction is gaming. In a sense, so then, yeah, a gaming addiction is bad. Alcohol addiction is bad. Like, you yeah, know so I think there's, uh, if you take the comparison of like gaming in comparison to football, but fo- football is like good for your physical, mental health. It's good for, um, it's generally a, a social thing to do. You go and play football with someone else. I mean, it's it's going to be a rare situation where you get addicted to kicking the ball up against the wall, right? So it, it's a social thing, and so that provides lots of benefits. Whereas gaming you might have very minimal like educational benefits from it. You're not going to gain much mental health from it um, as a human being. Don't, don't forget where our brains are designed long, long time ago. They're not designed for this whole culture of gaming, internet, all this stuff. So I think that completely takes away from our, our natural habitat, if you like. Um, I would say it depends on what kind of games you're playing, though. Like you talk about the social aspect, right? Yeah. Like you, you have team-based games where you're com- constantly communicating with yep. four to five other people on a, on a constant basis. Yeah. Like you could argue that in gaming, your communication actually, in, like skills actually increase while you're playing. Okay, let's go into that. That's interesting. What What is communication? Communication is being able to relay an idea clearly. And I don't know if you know the statistics, but how much of communication in a general sense is through verbal communication? A small amount, like 5%. It's about 7 to 9%, yeah. Depends on the culture. Um, But yeah, 7 to 9% is what the only thing that you're using in a normal online video game. And so, yeah, Mm -hmm. you're you're using, you're practicing the 7 to 9%. Fair enough, but the rest of it you're you're missing out. You're not seeing, um, you're not seeing face to face. Like even like we're speaking now. If, no, I, if I could... say something you don't like, I can see you're like you're frowning, <laughs> just smiling. You're like, I disagree <laughs> with that, and and there's consequences psychologically for me where I also gain like an understanding of what to say. Let's just say, for example, I start being um, I start being racist, right? So I'm racist mm-hmm. towards you, then. The way you respond, to, look at that. Your, your eye, your eyes, kind of like squinted, <laughs> like you're you're kind of seeing where I'm going with the conversation. You can interpret that, and the the practice of that is not going to come over gaming. And so when you then go into society and you start saying things and you can't pick up on these social cues, you don't know how to judge situations and get yourself in a good or bad situation or get yourself out of a bad situation, right? Yeah. No, but I would argue because like, again, we're talking about things like sports and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. I would argue that in sports, you don't really watch body language as much as you think you do. Like as you like as we're talking right now, obviously body language is a huge thing, right? Yeah. But when, when we talk about sports and esports, yeah. In both cases, I still think it's a case of you're still using you're still mainly just using that seven to nine percent. 
seven two nine percent. Okay, let's talk about um, so like League of Legends, for example, right? Yeah. You have verbal communication between each other, mm-hmm. and then you also have what we call pings. So you can ping like "go here, don't go here," do some things like this. And I guess that's also in replace of like body language in a sense. But yeah. in like a football match, you will be you'll be shouting across the field, "pass, don't pass," blah blah blah. You'll you'll be like raising your hand, don't do it. Other forms, um, uh, and so that body language is the same in normal society usually like you don't go past the ball and you stand still that past the ball is like an open open gesture and so no, like when, you wave your hand i'm ready i would argue that when you're playing football you're like so if someone if, if you're on the ball in football and someone goes past the ball right yeah. you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna look up and then obviously that's that's the ping the ping is their hand going up and then you yeah. ping the ball across yeah so, but like, do they yeah. ping with the little thing that comes up on a screen? No, they ping with their flipping hands. Exactly. And that's normal in society. If, if like, for example, your child is down the road, and you're like, where are you? They're going to put their hand up over here. That, that's a normal thing in society that we do. But hey, I'm, I'm talking about in a sense, like, you're not watching for their body language. You're just no, watching. You pick it that's up. their ping. I'm not watching for your body language now of how you smile or how your eyes squint or anything like this or yeah. how your shoulders relax. But you learn to pick that up through repetition throughout the first 15 20 years of your life and if you're constantly on a game then you are not um you're not susceptible to receive that education i think we're going to go in a circle again because because again what i'm talking about is a moderation and i don't want to go into that again (laughs) (laughs) okay um do you know anybody who's got a slight or a major sense of this gaming disorder um Yes, you do. Tell me a bit about them. I'd say one of my friends has a. I would say has quite a bit of a gaming disorder in the idea that um, he's not very sensitive to issues around, so he can't really read the read the room that well. You can't say it again. He he wouldn't really. He can't really read the room that well. Let's right. say. Yeah. So like again, like how you said, he doesn't he doesn't really match onto body cues and things like that. Yeah. And I'd say that does come from him maybe being online too much. Yeah. But yeah, like, like it happens when you, if you're if you're not if you're not talking to people face to face, is is bound to happen. Yeah, yeah, um, uh, yeah. My brother does a similar thing, and uh, I think he generally has an issue of understanding a ne- negative thing. Um, I, I see a lot of times where obviously we've played lots of games before as well, but uh, people are more uh, are less reluctant to be negative online. So, for example, if you do something they don't like, they're gonna start swearing at you. They can say all sorts of nasty things to you, but you mm-hmm. can't do anything about it to them, right? And I think yeah. this lack of consequences for these actions also provides like a negative impact for them socially to learn that as well. So if mm-hmm. you've got a, 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 an amount of this disorder um, on the spectrum, then your ability to understand um, or uh, just not participate in these negative actions like you might end up going on the street and like start swearing at somebody because that's all you do online. Yeah. Uh, online there's no consequences. On the street you get punched in the face. <laughs> right? That's true. So, yeah. I think that that happens, and I, I've I've personally seen that happen. Um, and so yeah, I think that's a, a big thing as well. No, no, too. In terms of video games generally, I do think that um, when I when I think video games are quite beneficial, I think it is done with a condition, right? Yeah, that video games are done, quote unquote, right. Yeah. So like, I, I remember one of the co-chairmen of Deloitte, like his name is John Hagel. He was talking about in you know World of Warcraft, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. You have raids. Yeah. He said one of the most prominent things that is is that after a raid, they have after action reviews where players sit down and kind of address what worked and what didn't during the raid. Yeah. That is a that is like an excellent example of just generally how gamers are quite good at dealing with failure. Yeah. And evaluating their own performances. Yeah, and like that is that is an example of a skill that actually kind of works, you know. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, that's good. I also think um, like taking it to like a basic sense as well. So I remember playing. I think it was a PlayStation Three, and my my nan come round, and you know, you pass the nan your controller, and she got no idea how to do this. So yeah. uh, being able to do all these things with your hands and learn this, I think that's that's a good thing as well. Um, it's like again, there is yeah, as you said, like. I played a lot. I played loads of games where people were like just swearing at me, being racist, doing all sorts of stuff, yeah. you know, like having their fun. But 
that is i'd say that is the negative sides of gaming yeah gaming done right i think is very beneficial and i think they did, a, they did a study about it with a, a number of surgeons go on. i forgot the university but i remember they put so at the time of this the surgeons were medical errors were like the eighth leading cause of like were were an eight of deaths um, yeah. causes yeah, of yeah. death and then, so they put these surgeons through three hours a week of gaming, generally. Yeah. Like, I don't know how much it correlated together. It might have been a dumb study, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But it was like, it correlated with having like a, over a third less errors and a, and a 30% faster completion rate. Okay, that's interesting, yeah. And what sort of game is they playing? Because I think that's a very impactful thing. If you're just playing this, like, Minecraft by yourself, I think that's a big difference than World of Warcraft raves and then you're... Uh... I, think I think they're playing puzzle games. Okay. Yeah. Some things like Tetris and things like that. It was quite. It was quite a while ago. It was back in like 2002. Yeah. Do you remember this game? I think I played it on like a DS or something. Brain Trainer. Brain Trainer. I remember Brain Trainer. Yeah. That was uh, it, it, taken into context of this conversation. That that's a completely different story, isn't it? That, that's yeah. That's a genuinely like an education. Brain thing. Trainer is is a game made. Yeah. To, to, to learn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I don't think that you can get addicted to Brain Trainer. I'd argue you can. You, th- you think? Yeah. I'd love because, for someone to come to me and say, I've been addicted to brain trainer no, no, before. Because like one of the main things that gamers, ha- what, one of the main things that gets gamers addicted to games is a dopamine rush, right? From, yeah. from, from succeeding in the specific game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I could, you could argue that after they succeed in brain trainer, that they get a huge dopamine rush there. And they're always looking for that. So they get addicted to something like brain trainer. Okay, yeah, yeah, I agreed. Uh, I think it's um, so like games and social media and things like this, like the notification on your phone, the way that pings and all that, and the way we get addicted to that is designed in that way. I don't think Brain Trainer is um, going to be as addictive because of the lack of design to be addictive. Mm. And so I think maybe there's probably going to be a lot less people. <laughs> Maybe as a percentage, it might be the same. I don't know. Because obviously, the, the amount of people who are actually playing brain training. And to be fair, I think it's one of the games that parents were quite happy for their kids to play all the time. Yeah. So which might be a bad be thing. Like, huh? Which might be a bad thing. Which. Warning Arguably, don't let your kids play brain trainer. <laughs> playing brain trainer is better than playing GTA as a kid. Yeah. Do you think you know, um, playing violent games makes people more violent? If I had to base it on personal experience, like me, I would say no, because I'm not violent, yeah. really. But I, I, apparently, there is quite a correlation from what I've from what I've heard. Yeah. Like, there's no, I don't have any studies, no direct evidence, but from what I've heard, it does make an impact. Yeah. It might get people into a more violent mindset, though, if you know what I'm saying. Okay. Because yeah. again, you're talking about how people will say things online without any consequences. Yeah. Right. So then, like, and these are generally violent based games like Call of Duty and stuff. Yeah. And then I think when you when they get onto real world, I think they have a violent mindset. Like they, they they know they can say something, but they don't due to the fact that they know there's consequences. Mm-hmm. So I'd say more of a mindset rather than an action based thing for the um, for violence. Yeah. I I through like personal experience, I've never seen I think I didn't really think that games are not like realistic. So like Call of Duty has completely taken a realism out of it. So you can do all sorts of like flying and jumping around and 360 quick scopes, you know, like crazy shit like that. But um, if you think about like League of Legends, that's just completely not real. I'm not going <laughs> to go and do the things that you can do on League of Legends. I'm not going to go and do the things that you can do on uh, many of these other games. More even like hack and slash, like there's powers involved as well. But like, I think there's more of an impact if you watch like Vikings. Uh, have you seen Vikings TV show? Uh, anything similar to that? So anything similar to that? Um, what's that famous one that like ten seasons? Yeah. Dragons. Game of Thrones. That's it. Game of Thrones. So like these things is like much more realistic. You can imagine yourself being a Viking. You can imagine yourself being one of these people, and you're kind of around and ha- cutting people's heads off and things like this. I think that's going to have a more negative impact on your. Um, your idea of violence or you know how behavior um like i've had an experience where like watching like five episodes of game of thrones just binge watched it and then i'm going to walk my dogs and i'm thinking like 
if someone comes up to me, I can just like beat them up, innit? <laughs> <laughs> just fully just headbutt them. And, and so, like, no, but wouldn't you say that that comes due to the fact that like in in shows generally you're more immersed? Maybe, like, yeah, yeah. Maybe because, because like, of the realism. Yeah, like you're more immersed into the the, the show than you are like like League of Legends. You're you're watching it from a bird's eye view. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but like Game of Thrones, you're 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 in it, <laughs> like you're in True. the show, you're in the world. Yeah. So, do you think that the VR would have a neg- more of a negative impact in the gaming community? I, I that's one th- one of the things I'm scared about VR is the is how re- like how much it can translate you into another world. Yeah. You put on that VR headset, everything that you everything around you is gone. Mm-hmm. You put on. You even put on headphones. You've completely changed two senses yeah. out of the five senses that you have. Yeah, and that that's put you into another world. In my head, that's quite that's quite a scary thing. Yeah. Well, as like, soon as you uh, believe it, it doesn't matter the senses. Like you, your dreams, for example. You, sometimes you believe your dreams are real, yeah. even after you wake up and you know it's a dream. You're like, well, was that actually real? Um, uh, you didn't have any senses there. <laughs> no, but I I I'd, I'd say dreams are different to VR. <laughs> No, but the, the point of understanding is real and then how you react. But I'm I'm scared in the sense of, um, or not scared, I'm worried that VR will get so good and then you're playing a game and you play it a lot because you like the game. And for example, in the game, someone comes up to you and one of the things to do to attack that person is like headbutt them, right? For example, mm-hmm. you gain this habit that when someone comes to you, you headbutt them. And so <laughs> in real life, are you just going to build up this reflex reaction? So when someone no. comes up to you, <laughs> I still remember one of the scariest things I did in VR, right? So yeah. I'm in Pakistan playing. Uh, I'm at like a VR arcade. Yeah. And then what they did was there was a it was a simple game, and it's where you walk the plank, right? The oh, plank yeah, yeah. was maybe ten centimeters high. Yeah. As soon as I got to the end of it, that ten centimeter ten centimeters literally felt like a mile. Yeah. Like I, I walked off it, I jumped, I legit fell to the ground after I jumped. Yeah. Like that was just like an example of how real. It gets, VR, it feels yeah. anyway. And it's only the start. Like, um, think about like how immersive gaming is, graphics and like, like just gameplay as well. Um, games have come in the past like 20 years. It's, it's mm-hmm. crazy. Um, no, but, the, and also the thing is, one thing about games, I do think there are a lot of skills you can win from, you, you can gain from games. What do you think you've gained from gaming? One of the things I think I've learned from games is probably adapting situations. Like what? So like uh so my main game that I play is Rocket League, right? Yeah. You it's generally a one v one or two v two basis. Yeah. And you're playing like loads of different styles, loads of different different kinds of players, and you've got to adapt the way you play to beat that player, right? Yeah. That's mm-hmm. like generally just how games go. Yeah. And I think one of the things games has taught me, like I've been playing games since I was like five years old. I think one of the things that games has taught me is to adapt to different situations. So that's and more like problem solving. Skills. It is problem solving, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can agree with skills, that. Adapting it and using that to achieve success. Yeah. And um, yeah, recognizing almost like other people's behaviors in a sense. Yeah, um, in a, yeah to try and win. Yeah. I think I was saying that to my friend once. I was like, it's a bit weird, but sometimes I feel like you can see the facial expressions of the cars in the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like no, I understand. You can see their intent. Yeah. Um, I, I guess you can translate like when I ride my motorcycle in real life. Um, mm. you, you don't need to know someone doesn't need to put the indicator on to do to do that. I can see. You know, I usually look into everybody's uh wind wind mirror where they're looking. Um, mm-hmm. and also as soon as they turn their wheel a bit, a tire turns right. So if I see yeah. a tire turn, so a lot of people don't use the indicators. So I've learned to use that um as my indication of am i going to get hit <laughs> so should i slow down Fair enough. Or, or do i fly past no um, a lot of skills do generally like there are skills you can definitely learn from like different situations yeah it was like well i think one of the things i realized was a lot of people generally that do like like even people, a lot of people in my course that are trying to be physicists yeah a lot of them are gamers yeah and i've always wondered why <laughs> why do you think that is and I think um, gaming and science, in a sense, in terms of the skills that you need, come hand in hand. Go on. 
because I think a lot of people view science. So now that what I'm seeing is a lot of people view problems in science right. as games that they need to beat. Yeah. So like I, I realized when I was at a I was at a problem solving tutorial. So that's what something that we have at uni where they just give us questions and we have to solve it as a group. Yeah. What I realized is the the way people like react to the questions, people um, act towards the questions is quite game like. Like how I react to a game. Yeah. So like yeah. I've got to beat the question in front of me. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think, think gaming is very competitive. It, it yeah, gives I the think... people a competitive edge. Yeah. To yeah. General life things. Yeah, I think most games now is very competitive. Like, uh, I can only think of like one game, which is mostly just exploration. You know, No Man's Sky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that I don't think there's any like comp competition, or you're not really facing anybody. I know there's multiplayer, but you don't really meet anybody um, because it's so big of a of a universe. Um, and even if you did, there's no like you don't fight. I'm pretty sure. So. Yeah it's nothing like call of duty or you know the games that you play league of legends or whatever um there's no competition in that sense so i think yeah most games are competitive in a sense but is that a good thing for everybody uh i argue what i'd argue that um having compare a compare competitive edge is quite a good thing okay but you've taken like an example of like in your in your in your class of physicists right yeah but that's a very small that's a filtered sample group. Yep. Very, very filtered sample group. The people that have succeeded, succeeded, succeeded in um, a passive education of uh, and problem solving, they also happen to... Really no, but I'm, I'm just trying... I, at this point, like, I know it's very, like, it's filtered, but I'm trying to bring <laughs> an example of where... Yeah, yeah. How the gaming mindset has come towards... Uh, let's say for these guys, it's actually their careers. Yeah. Like, I just, that. yeah, I just thought of an idea that, um, so a lot of, I think we talked about in the instant gratification, uh, video that we did that a lot of kids, because they get everything instantly, like progression through their career is more difficult relating to that, uh, relating to gaming. I think that, so for example, if you want to be the best at League of Legends at the top of the rank at League of Legends, you just need to play, play the game and be the best at it. Right. Mm -hmm. You don't need to impress your your boss. You don't need to have good relationships, um, and so and relationships are like one of the biggest part of human life, with any part of your life, right? Um, so, gaming takes away that relationship need. I'd say mostly. the one, the, the only thing that gaming has that you need, like again, League of Legends, for example, is. You can be the best mechanical player in League of Legends, but it doesn't make you the best player. Okay, yeah, no, okay, yeah. Obviously, some teamwork there, but you don't need to, like... So, for example, if you want a promotion at work, what, what would you do? You, you do your job well. Okay, you, mm -hmm. play, you play your game well. You work as a team. That's part of you doing your job well. Mm -hmm. and then, if your boss doesn't like you, you're not getting a promotion. Yeah, that's true. But if you're a dickhead swearing on a game all the time, cursing people, they're going to think, oh, I don't want that in my team. Yeah. Uh, you're gone, you know? Yeah, I agree. But so, it, this yeah. is why you count gaming as a sport more than a... Like, sport is different to game. Uh, to, sport is different to, like, other, like your standard company job, right? Uh, agreed. Okay, but if you're in a football match... And you're you're just swearing to some people on the sidelines. You're probably not going to be the leader of the football match. No, but in a, in a football game, for example, yeah, like there are there are numerous players that have bad that I've known to have bad attitudes. Yeah, but their skill brings them into the game. Their skill allows them to play. Like I can give you numerous examples. In football. Are they are they are they becoming the leaders of the game? Are, are they the what I called <laughs> the captains. Team captains, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of them are. Huh? So in my head, one of the greatest defenders of all time, Sergio Ramos, yeah. is known for dirty tactics, um, completely like bad mouthing um, his opponents, mm -hmm. right? But he is the captain of one of the greatest football teams of all time. Okay, but bad mouthing in a sense of being competitive, bad mouthing. So for example, if you take um. I mean, he uh, injured MMA. an opponent player in a final once. 
Yeah, but if you say like MMA, for example, right? MMA, yeah. you can see throughout the whole match, they're sweating each other, calling each other like names, you know, trying to put them down to because it's a psychological game as well as yeah. like the actual fight, right? So in that sense, yeah, this guy, Sergio Ramos, or whatever you said his name is, um, he probably is mentally tactic fighting in a sense, yeah. right? Um, so I don't think that's a bad thing, but if he, I'm trying to think of it. So League of Legends, for example, you get all sorts of like name callings. I'm pretty yeah. sure he's not going to be racist to the other team. And if he was, he's kicked out of Premier League, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And, and so the, if you're racist in League of Legends, nothing happens and you can still be the best at League of Legends. You can still become the top rank, whatever that's called. Mm-hmm. You're probably not going to be in esports. But you can yeah. still be the top rank, and and the reward system doesn't uh, still rewards you regardless of your behavior towards other people. But there there is a report like function. Th- there is yes in New Legends. I don't know how like I don't know how good it is though. That's the thing. Like I can't tell you how good it is. Like in some games you have a good report function. Some where, in some uh, games you don't get... have any report function. Some games don't have any. Yeah, and... like um. So like Call of Duty, if you're in a lobby, you can just yeah. It's just the competition. That's the last report function I've ever seen. Like you can report someone, it makes no difference. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the only way you're gonna get a report on them is if you video them, record them. Actually, you know, being racist. Yeah. And and to be fair, I like how how games are trying to are trying to trying to fix that. So I I saw one of the things that PlayStation are doing now. Go on. Is um. They've told you that your chats may be recorded in case someone reports it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So people are scared because of like privacy and stuff. Yeah. But I think it's good in the sense that so they they've pronounced they've like announced that they use it when someone reports it. Someone reports abuse. Okay. Yeah, but so, people can report abuse for any sorts of reasons. No, but if someone reports abuse, they have right to look, they have right to like hear the, the voice chat, the party of, chat. Of that part. Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. So then they can actually review maybe where where like the abuse has happened or where and it does it does kind of deter somewhat cyberbullying online games. You know, I think that's a really good thing. Uh, I think um that holds accountability to uh, to a lot of people. I don't know. It's if a that's... brave step though. It's a it was a very brave step from Sony to do. Yeah. It. Is it just Sony doing that? Uh I don't know about Microsoft doing it yet but Sony are the ones that are known to do it right now. Yeah, are they controlling? Because I know Sony has uh, a group chat through the actual PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, whatever. But you can also have the in-game chat. They yeah. can't record that, I'm pretty they sure. They can't record that. Okay, yeah. So they're doing, what they, they're doing what they can, which is... But to be honest, let's, let's, if we are in a group chat, what they can record or what they are recording... We're probably not going to be talking shit about each other, right? It's when we go into a lobby with other people that we start calling them racist, yeah. which they're not recording. But it, 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 I think, yes, obviously, yes. Yeah, yeah. But it, it is this. I'm, I'm saying more of the idea. It's the step they're taking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, progress in the right direction, but a very small step. You, you always, you always need, you always need an initial step. Yeah. To move forward, right? Mm-hmm. Like the initial step is always the probably the most difficult step to do. Yeah. yeah definitely so in society. It's, yeah. it's quite good that I think they're trying to, they're moving that step forward so that other companies, other gaming companies are going to be willing to go for that as well. Yeah. Do you think, because, um, I, I tried to look before the video some statistics, but I couldn't see any comparison. Over time, do you think, uh, let's say, for example, 1980s, the percentage of the popular po- po- can't even speak the percentage of the population that is participating in real life sports um do you think it's decreased to now over the past 40 years due to the increase in indoor activities for example gaming or netflix uh, or like this? arguably i think yes yeah because uh, before, the, like, there wasn't as much to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I feel like we now, like, the more the more time goes on, the more things there are to do. So, obviously, there will be less people 
participating in your your very classic old school sports. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's bound to happen when you increase the amount of things that's possible. Old school, available. yeah, I think that really defines it. Rather, it's old school. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Um, like I, you could argue that football is old, like football, cricket, things like that are old school sports, but. Obviously, yeah. they're they're in the they're, they're modern games. They're in the modern game, <laughs> but like, like they 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 originated from quite a while back. Yeah. Do you think the fact that less? Do you think that the, the possible fact we don't know that that was just our our interpretation of what we yeah. think? Um, do you think the possible fact that less people are participating in actual sports it means that the the people that do are probably more dedicated towards it? And so people be going going into like the Premier League and that they have a lot less option, um, and probably more competition. But if you want to get there, then you're probably more likely to get there because there's less people actually participating. I would say I don't want to use the Premier League for an example in terms of sport because of the there's so many different factors to why people get really good at football. Like one of the main factors I'd argue that people get really good at football. As much as it is the passion for the sport, it is the money that you can get from the sport. Yes. So I think that is one of the driving factors when it comes to that. So then, like, football is, like, we're from the UK. So football is the biggest sport in the UK. Yeah. Everyone, everyone and their dad has played football <laughs> at least once. Yeah. You know, like, it, it is like, it's like a more, of a, it's more of a cultural thing here. Yeah. yeah. And people that, People that generally put their their lives and their like like lives worth of training to it, they do it for passion and money basically. Yeah. So I think those are the driving factors for it. So I'd argue, kind of no, mm -hmm. that there's there's less option. I think there is the same number amount of option there was before. Okay, even with less people playing. Yeah. Playing sports. Because I think the people that play games instead of playing sports weren't dedicated to the sport in the first place. Like, wouldn't yeah. would have been dedicated enough to the sport in the first place. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, you know how, like, at, right at the beginning, we defined this uh, disorder of gaming, right? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that... Um, I don't think that includes people that are becoming so good at it that they end up making it like a job. You know, so if you're doing YouTube, I then it's... That's probably socially acceptable. So I think like the disorder is also you're not gaining benefit from it rather than just the losses. Because you could say that like if you're a YouTuber, um, or you're an esports person or whatever, then you're gaining benefit from it, but you've also got this gaming disorder. Because mm -hmm. you're you're playing all these games, right? Um, and that also brings me to another point where we talked about the pros and cons of playing a game in comparison to like playing football. But also, the social aspect of football is, is not just in the game. It's like in the half time. It's in the changing rooms. It's mm -hmm. when you uh, finish the game and you have club meetings. You go out to eat and like stuff like that. Um, I think that has a huge impact as well. Where gaming now doesn't have that. You in between lobbies, in between games, you're not doing anything apart from probably surfing the internet or or just talking. Yeah, pretty much. And so, yeah, I think that's a, that has a huge impact as well. Not just in the game, what happens after or in between the games. I think um, you're talking about the gaming sort of like I think, yeah, you're right. With the if you if you take it to an esport level, you it becomes your job. So it's a good thing that you're doing. You're yeah. playing games as much as you are. In terms of the social aspect, I think it like the problem I have when I'm arguing with this set with this idea is that I say it's called gaming done right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So if you like, I told you about the World of Warcraft thing, right? Yeah. Where people are after raids, they usually do um, after raid reviews. Yeah. yeah. And that is gaming done right. Gaming done wrong is if you if you do a raid and then you're just finished. Okay, but that's very specific to World of Warcraft. That... I, I'm saying that that that's that's for most RPG games, role playing games. You have you most have RPGs like are not multiplayer. I'm talking about multiplayer RPG. <laughs> okay, yeah. Like you, you always look about, and that's your tip of it. I want to hit with RPGs as well. You, you, you see what you did wrong that made you fail. Yes. And you improve on that. But that doesn't take and away with, the social aspect. With multiplayer RPGs, well. yeah. Now with multiplayer RPGs, you do that with other people. 
Yeah. And being able to evaluate with a group of people is something that's quite useful. Yeah. So I, it again, it's as I'm saying, it's always gaming done right. If you've done it wrong, like if you're not, yeah. if you're not doing these after person reviews, if you're not talking to your teammates, if you're not, if you're not doing all that kind of stuff, you're you're losing the benefits that you can gain from. But when we're, when we're talking about this gaming disorder, we're talking about the things that you lack due to the gaming. Yes. Gaming done right, as you say, then you uh, are still doing the, the things you just mentioned. But even if you're not playing the game you're going out, if you go on a date and the date doesn't go well, you mentally review the date. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't yep. have done this. Or I shouldn't have gone to the toilet. Or I should have taken the girl home. Um, and so... You do the same thing. You're not gaining something because you're actually playing the game and you're doing gaming right. Um, but you are losing because of the gaming. You're losing the social aspect. Okay, yeah. I, I, to be fair, yes. You, you are losing <laughs> the social aspect of, of but, like body language. Yes, I yeah, agree. Yeah, but, but you're not gaining anything from the gaming uh, in, in a big sense of, of, of the disorder. Like it's not like oh you've got a disorder, yeah. you're now better at this. I see. I'd say there's one skill. <laughs> I knew you would say one something. Skill <laughs> yeah. That you learn if you have a gaming disorder. Yeah. And that is problem solving. You don't think you can get problem solving in an every day to day life of a normal person that doesn't play that doesn't have a gaming disorder, or somebody who's not addicted. And has a gaming disorder, but also play games. You understand where we're going? I understand where we're going now. Fine. <laughs> the gaming disorder is bad. Yes, I agree. Hey, <laughs> we'll cut the video there. Don't get a gaming disorder. Uh, let your kids play good gaming, but probably sports. As play well. it with play it with decent amount of time. <laughs> there we go. All right, thank you for watching. See you in the next one.